Seir who were invading Judah, and they were defeated. And the men of Ammon and Moab rose up against the men from Mount Seir to destroy. So here we get the detail of what happened. They rose up against the, the men from Mount Seir to destroy and annihilate them. Then after they finished slaughtering the men from Seir, they helped to destroy one another. So two of the armies got together and they destroyed one. And then those two destroyed each other. When the men of Judah came to the place which overlooks the desert, and you can see in this picture, and you can just imagine, right, if we go back to that photograph, Teresa, um, says, when the men of Judah came to the place which overlooks the desert, they looked toward the vast army, and they saw only dead bodies lying on the ground. No one had escaped. So Jehoshaphat and his men went off to carry their plunder, and they found among them a great amount of equipment and clothing and also articles of value, more than they could take away. There was so much plunder that it took three days to collect it. And on the fourth day, they assembled in the valley of Baraka, where they praised the Lord. This is why it is called the Valley of Baraka to this day. It means praising the Lord. So, uh, then, led by Jehoshaphat, all the men of Judah and Jerusalem returned joyfully to Jerusalem. For the Lord had given them cause to rejoice over their enemies. They entered Jerusalem and went into the temple of the Lord with harps and lutes and trumpets. And the fear of God came upon all the kingdoms and the countries when they heard how the Lord had fought against the enemies of Israel and the kingdom of Jehoshaphat was at peace for his God had given him rest on every side. Amen. Amen. Lord, I thank you for this story. I thank you for this inspiration. I thank you for those that went before us to show us the true way to give you glory but also to uh, face our enemy in battle. And so Lord, I just ask that you continue to reveal your truth for us today through this. Um, if, again, if you're somebody who circles things in your Bible or writes things uh, down, then I would recommend that in, uh, in verse 27 you circle joyfully. Where it says that, led by Jehoshaphat, all the men of Jerusalem returned joyfully. And then also, um, down in verse 30, circle the word peace and circle the word rest. I want to point out that earlier in this story, they were alarmed. Right? And the Lord said, do not be filled with fear. He said that because they were afraid. The result, though, of being obedient to him was they had joy, peace, and rest. Amen? Amen. All right, so we're afflicted from all sides all the time. We know that our battle is not flesh and blood, but against the principalities and powers of darkness. The day is evil. And so we can use this with an understanding of the power of praise but understand that, it's like my grandmother, my great-grandmother used to say, things are more spiritual. The spirit realm is more real than, than the natural realm. That's what she used to say. Is that right? Did I get that right? And so it means, I mean, this is here right now. But the natural realm is not nearly as real and not as active as what's happening in the spiritual. All around us, all the time. Okay. So two things we can take away from how they approach this with praise. Number one, praise and worship weakens principalities and powers. I could give you a bunch of verses, we could, but I just, you know, again, worship is so multifaceted, I just hope that through this story you can accept that the power of praise and God being enthroned on that is that it weakens principalities and powers. And then number two, it confuses the forces of darkness. We see that in the story, don't we? Confuses the forces of darkness. Okay. All right, so let's talk about the double-edged sword. Psalm 149, verses 5 through 9. It says, Let the saints rejoice in this arm and sing for joy on their beds. May the praise of God be in their mouths and the double-edged sword in their hands. So what is their double-edged sword? Praise. Right, this, it starts to become, the more you read about this, it starts to become more a more evident truth. Does that make sense? And I have seen this. I've seen it in my own life, and I've seen it as, especially as a worship leader. I'm, I just can't believe that I had the opportunity to stand and I could sing, Lord, I lift your name on high, with a guitar, and I can see someone set free in that moment from bondage, bondage of addictions, bondage of self-doubt, abuse, codependent relationships, healings that happen physically in their body, healings that happen in the mind, 
God reroutes the neural pathways. They don't think the same way they think anymore. And we do that through praise and worship. And why does that happen in the moment? Do you think it's because they're emotional about the words we're singing? It's because we're singing praises to God, and the power of God goes out, and He pushes back those, those, the forces of darkness. He cleanses the atmosphere. I mean, when the team's up here singing today, you know, hopefully most of you are not watching them, but rather participating in the unified praise of our God. Because when that happens, it's, just, it's almost like the heavens open up and the power of God comes down and the enemy can't stand in the face of that. So, principalities and powers are weakened and the forces of darkness are confused. They don't know what to do. And in its place, we have the Spirit of God. Alright, so now we understand why in context, and I'll just wrap up with this. Now we understand a little more in context uh, why in Ephesians... Paul tells us, uh, yeah, we cover this, uh, for our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against rulers and against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. And in the same teaching, he also tells us to speak to one another with psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. Sing and make music in your heart to the Lord, also giving thanks to God the Father for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Why do you think that instruction is there? He makes it very plain. Our power is not against the natural realm. It's about what's happening in the heavens. It's about what's happening inside the war for your soul. And he says, so sing to one another with psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. You guys all with me on this? All right. So the big statement was, there's power when we sing. Did we get that? Are we cool with that? All right, awesome. I will touch on uh, one thing, and that is, uh, you know, in 1 Thessalonians 5.18, it says, Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Um, this element of giving thanks was something that, I mean, I've read this story so many times, I've, and, uh, and yet somehow, you know, I love it when you read the Word and you just drink it in, and God reveals something new to you, right? You know, no matter how many times you look at it. And just this week in our small group, we were talking about thankfulness. And about responding with not counting the cost. You know, that's kind of the subject matter of our discussion. And, the, and to combat that, we approach things with thankfulness. And so, then they said, well, what are you speaking on this week? And I told them, and I said, oh, it's just so cool. Because they didn't go out before the army and sing, God, stomp on the devil. <laughs> they didn't go out before the army and say, Lion of Judah, They didn't go out before the army and say, you know, God, pour out your spirit on us. We need you now. We want to drink you in, oh God. I guess it's okay to sing that every now and then. But anyway, they said, give thanks to the Lord for his love endures forever. So the enemy is oppressing you. Right? It's coming against you. The forces of darkness are out there ready to take you down. They have strategy. They're specific in what they're doing. So we seek God. We hear from Him. We have instant obedience. And the, and the key, like that secret sauce, is thankfulness. Right? Amen. Okay. All right, for those of you that understood all this already, and you're like, okay, got it. All right, here's the, here's the bonus teaching. And if the, uh, oh, this is always so funny for me. If the worship team could come up. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yeah, I got to tell you, worship, worship folks, I mean, people in the band, they're always like, they got to be ready, you know. They got to be ready. Is he now? Uh, is he? Okay. Anyway. All right, so, the Overcomer's three-step plan. That's what I call this. I don't know if it's the best title, but there you go. In Jehoshaphat and his people, when they were, when they were come against, right, when they had this, this uh, forces of darkness surrounding them and come against, the first thing they did is they humbly sought the Lord's wisdom. That was their first response. Their response wasn't, oh, no, or what's happening, or I need to go ask my neighbor what he thinks about this. <laughs> right? First response. What is God saying about this situation? What is God saying? 
What does God say? If you, find, if you have people in your life that you trust, right? you know they hear from the Lord, they've spoken in your life before, you found the, you know, them to be accurate, and then call them when something happens. Immediately pray. I remember when my car blew up out here, you know, with the fire and the engine, when you came out to them, you know, and you were there killed. <laughs> you know, I was standing out there, and the car's on fire, and I'm looking at the engine, and I'll admit, I didn't say, give thanks to the Lord, for the engine is good, loving God. But after a moment, I did say, you know, thank you, God, that I had a car that could blow up. <laughs> True story. So they immediately, so there's phase one, two, and three in the story of Jehoshaphat, right, in Judah. First, they humbly sought the Lord's wisdom. Then when they got it, the prophet spoke the word. Then when they got it, they responded in instant obedience. There's one thing I've learned from my father, it's delayed obedience, right, is disobedience. So they responded in, diso in instant obedience. You know, God doesn't necessarily uh, require you to do everything. But he does require from us the willingness to do anything. So they responded in instant obedience. And then the third part of this, after the enemy had been defeated in Jesus' name, they reaped the blessing with thankfulness. You know, the other subtext in here is they were a worshiping people. They were a praising people. They were constantly giving God glory all the time with everything they had, with their voices, with their instruments, with everything. Some people forget step three. They say, the enemy's been vanquished, but I don't deserve the blessing. I don't deserve the reward. You know, God's gifts are good. He wants to give them to us. He wants to pour it out. He wants us to walk in complete freedom. He wants us to not have chains shackling us, right? He wants us to be yoked to him. And so reap the blessing with thankfulness. All right, cool. There you go. End of the message. <laughs> so, we have an opportunity to sing right now. And uh, so, yeah, let's stand and I'll pray. Bless our time together. We will sing praises and thankfulness to the Lord. And we will reap that blessing in Jesus' name. Lord God, I thank you so much for who you are. You are a good God. You are a mighty God. You are a faithful God. You are a loving God. You are a God who wants the best for us. That's amazing. Lord, I know there's some folks in here who probably don't believe that. They don't believe that you, God, could care about them and want the best in their situation. But Lord, we know and we've seen evidence of it manifested in our very midst that that's what you want. You give us those promises in your word, Lord. So God, you want to bless us. And so Lord, today I'm thanking you. I'm thanking you that we have this opportunity to understand that when we lift your praise, that you are seated on that and that you'll push back any of our oppressors. Amen. So what I'm praying right now is that if you're struggling with something, most of us are, even I am, challenges in life, that right now you would give thankfulness and praise to God. And I think you'll see that the atmosphere, I mean, we've already got a clean atmosphere. This is a clean room, you know what I mean? This is a safe place. This is a safe haven. God dwells in this temple as well as this temple. But I would just believe that right now, if you haven't yet given your heart over to giving Him thankfulness and praise in all things, that you would do that right now.